We are doing a study on the anointing, and uh, this particular lesson, we're calling it Tomorrow's Anointing. We're looking at the life of David, how that God developed his life. I'm using for a scripture text, 1 Samuel 16 and 1. And the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. We've been looking at this passage of scripture. We've looked at it from the life of King Saul being yesterday's man. He had the anointing but lost it. Then we looked at Samuel being a picture of today's man. He had the anointing and he still has it. And then David, David, the shepherd boy, who has not yet received his anointing. That happens on down in, chap in verse 13 of this same chapter. And so let's look at our study. David, tomorrow's anointing. With, with David's anointing, it, it was a secret anointing when it happened in his life. In other words, it was private in the home. I believe that is biblical. I really think that... Um, that's where our Christian life should be practiced, first of all, is in the home, in the private setting. It was an anointing that he sought after. In other words, he was seeking God, not a gift, not an anointing, not a ministry. He never had any aspirations to become king of Israel. That wasn't on his radar, but it was something God chose him for. He sought God, God chose him. It, it was also an anointing that was not going to be fulfilled for many years. And I think this is where so many people miss it when it comes to walking with God. They want it. They want it now. It's like the fellow that prayed for patience. God, give me patience. Give it to me right now. Uh, but that's not the way it works. And another thing that happened in David's life that was totally unexpected, it brought a lot of pain, a lot of conflict into his life. I think it is well said that rather than us saying speaking in tongues is the evidence of the Holy Spirit, maybe a better mark would be trouble, trouble. Oh, yes, because that's exactly what he's going to bring you into, is into conflict with a world that's going the wrong direction. Let me, first of all, focus on the word patience. This is the key word for tomorrow's man. Patience. We've got to learn it. And the only way, of course, to learn that is simply to walk through it. Just as much as the key word for King Saul was repentance, the word for David is patience. Be patient. Oh my. It's something that it's difficult for anyone that's a type A personality like myself. I, I mean, I always felt like we ought to have done it yesterday. Yesterday. And uh, here, here we're still, we haven't got the job done. The, the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Samuel 13 and verse 14, and it's repeated then in Acts, the 13th chapter, verse 22. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. Of course, that man was David. Now, he didn't say that he was looking for a perfect man. There isn't any. There's no such thing. Uh, what, what he's looking for is someone that is seeking after God or pursuing God might be a better word. There was a very popular book a few years ago called The God Chasers. I, I think that's what David was. Maybe he's one of those original God Chasers. God was looking for somebody that was seeking after him. And he found that that man in David. David, of course, was just a teenager when this happened. We guesstimate it happening about 16 years of age in David's life. But 
even though he now receives this anointing from God, and that happens in verse 13 where it said that Samuel arose and anointed him and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. It's very important that we note he has the anointing, but not the crown. He is anointed of God, but he is not king. What does he need? He needs patience, patience in his life. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. David's first opportunity for ministry was a private setting. It was ministering to his, by serving his father, taking care of his father's sheep. His second opportunity, according to the biblical record, what we know of David, came when uh, King Saul was troubled and they invited David to come into the palace. And privately, he ministered music, played sacred music for King Saul. So it would be a semi-private thing. Somebody has heard about him, knows about him. But then the third opportunity that he had for ministry came when Goliath came on the scene. When Goliath came, it changed everything in David's life. And if David had not done the preparation work to be ready for this day, he hadn't developed his character, it would have been too late after Goliath. Because that changed everything. When he killed the giant, all of Israel knew this young man is anointed by God. And suddenly he's thrust on the forefront of Israel's newspapers. I mean, everybody's talking about David, what David has done. And if he had not have developed his character before that moment, it would have been too late at that point. That's what they call succeeding too soon. If you haven't taken the time to develop your character, your integrity, what you are on the inside, what you are in private, if you've not developed that before you receive the opportunity for public ministry, you're already in trouble and your success will soon lead you to your downfall. Now, the second thing that I want to deal with, and I want to deal with this in depth in David's life, is what I'm going to use the word refined, refined. David was anointed of God, but his anointing needed refining. The truth of it is, we all need this. He's anointed by God, but he's not ready to become the king. Yes, Spiritually, he has received what we would say the Holy Spirit has come upon him. But he's still just a shepherd boy. It's in his mind, in his thinking. He thinks like a shepherd boy. He doesn't think like a king. Now, it's, it's difficult for us to say whether God raised David up for Goliath or whether God raised Goliath up for David. I think probably the truth is both of them. See, the one thing that we cannot rush in any of our lives is maturity. It takes approximately 20 years to make a man. How long does it take to make a man of God? About 20 years. You can't rush it. When you try to rush it, all you do is create chaos. Anytime you start trying to rush maturity, all you see is chaos immaturity. And so in, in David's life, the anointing that was upon David's life allowed him to see Goliath differently than the other Israelites saw him. The other Israelites saw him as a threat. David saw him as an opportunity. Or as someone said, the Israelites were saying, man, he's too big to hit. And David is saying, he's too big to miss. It, it was a total different way of looking at the problem. And the way he was able to do that was the anointing of God that was upon his life. And because he had taken the time to know God out on, out on those Judean hillsides with his father's sheep, he wasn't wasting his time. No, he's worshiping God. He's not just playing music. He's singing worship to God. And there, God is developing the shepherd boy, preparing him for the day He's going to become 
king of Israel. Now, one of the most difficult things when you have a secret anointing or tomorrow's anointing is learning to live with your abilities and your limitations. See, we, we, we become frustrated, so we start pressing and pushing and, and, and trying to make things happen. I speak from experience. I've got a lot of scars that came from that, of trying too hard, trying to make things happen. Uh, in fact, you know, I, I, I like the little jingles, and one of them I used to say and until I realized that was really foolish what I was saying. Uh, but uh, I like to say, you know, there are three kinds of people. There are people that make things happen, people that watch things happen, and people who wonder what happened. And we, you know, we, we understand that. But the, the truth is only God can make things happen. We cannot change ourselves, let alone anyone else. Only God can do that. And so the patience that it come that we need to, to develop our character, to develop our thinking, so we are ready for the position. Learn to live with your limitations, where God has put you. Don't be impatient and try to change it yourself. See, when, when David stands before Saul and says, why doesn't somebody go kill Goliath? First of all, Saul tells him, you can't do it. And then he, secondly, he tries to tell him how to do it. I find that amazing. If, if Saul knew how to do it, why wasn't he doing it? He said, I've got this armor, that, that, and well, it's not working for Saul. Why is it going to work for you? And, and I've seen this so many times that the people that give you advice are the people that are doing nothing. Uh, the talk is cheap. Anybody can talk. Show me something. Jesus said, by their fruit, you will know them, not by their talk. And we've got so many people, they talk by the mile and walk by the inch. And, and David knew he could not fight Goliath in Saul's armor and win. He was exactly right, and neither can we. Don't take anything to battle that you haven't tested in your own life. Now, what David does not realize at this moment, he's going to discover it. It's going to be a big shock for him. But the biggest battle is not going to be Goliath. The biggest battle is going to be his own king's jealousy. His own king is going to turn against him in just a few short years. We don't know exactly how much time was spent here, but probably between two to four years. And Saul is then going to be attacking David. That's going to become the biggest battle in his life, dealing with Saul's jealousy. Dealing with Goliath, that was over in a few minutes. With Saul, it went on for 20 years, 20 years. What's God doing? God is developing David, preparing for him that moment of maturity when he will be ready to be king. Now, there's two ways, two ways that we can be refined primarily. The first way is being refined by criticism. Now, none of us like criticism, but the truth is, those that experience yesterday's anointing, like King Saul, are usually the first ones to criticize someone with tomorrow's anointing, like the shepherd boy David. Saul saw David as a threat to his kingdom. And so he starts doing everything that he can to bring him down, to destroy him. Now, that, that, that's a tragedy. That, that, that's a tragedy. It's, it's like one famous general said, I've been shot at all my life, sometimes even by my enemies. In other words, nothing like getting shot by friendly fire. Friendly fire, but it doesn't matter whether it's a friend shooting you or an enemy shooting you. If you're shot, you're dead. And, and, David's going to experience this from his own king. That, that becomes one of the most difficult problems in life when you have position, people in positions of authority that should be protecting you and they become the ones that 
attack you, that criticize you. See, if you're in Saul's position with yesterday's anointing, when someone like David comes along, it's only a target for jealousy because you recognize he has what you've lost. But if you're going to be like David, notice what David did, the way he responded to Saul. In fact, the favorite term that David used when he would refer to King Saul, he would call him the Lord's anointed. Now, that was a term of respect. He knew Saul had lost the anointing, but he still continued to show him respect. The way that you treat yesterday's man is going to determine whether you are tomorrow's man. Because if you take matters in your own hands and you start trying to kill Saul and get rid of him, you become just like him. You too have become yesterday's man and have lost the anointing. But because David's heart was pure, and, and, and it really was, when you read the story of David and Saul, Saul became David's enemy, but David never became Saul's enemy. His heart was pure. So the purity of his heart becomes his passport to even a greater anointing and uh, becoming the king of Israel. Saul's jealousy was preparing David for the day that he was going to rule as the king of Israel. Now, let, let me talk about another side. Not only are we refined by criticism, and none of us enjoy that, but pay attention. When your critics talk, there may be only 2% of what they're saying that is true, but learn from that 2% and become a better person. But then there is what I will call refining by encouragement. Oh, we all need this. Everybody needs it. See, God gives David, the prophet Samuel, who helps him to recognize and receive God's anointing on his life. But God also gave him someone else. He gave him Jonathan as a friend. What did Jonathan do? Jonathan provided encouragement for David. Now, I think this is where most of us are and what we can do if we will focus upon it. Become an encourager. Look for opportunities to say something to encourage people. Continually do this. This is what Jonathan did in David's life. He's constantly encouraging David. You're going to be the king. I'll sit next to you. Even my father knows you're going to be king. I mean, those are the kinds of words that he was continually saying. God knows everybody needs a friend. Even Jesus needed someone to pray with him. Everybody needs a friend. A, a, a friend is somebody that they know all about you, but they still like you. How we need that in our lives. That's Jonathan. In Jonathan, David found honesty and loyalty. Loyalty. See, Jonathan was the royal prince of Israel. He was King Saul's son. So he knew a lot about how to run kingdoms, how to deal, you know, the, all the court protocol, all the things you have to do to be a king. Jonathan is helping David come to understand what it's like to be a king, what you have to do. The, 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 the challenge again is patience. The, when we have a secret anointing, waiting for our refinement to be developed so that we can fulfill the promises on, that God has given us. If we try to take matters into our own hands, we're only going to lose God's anointing and become yesterday's man. Now, let me talk about some areas of testing for tomorrow's man. Here, here's one. In 1 Samuel 18 and 14, it talks about David and said he acted wisely. Now, he's just a young man. Saul is... 40 years of age, and he's acting very unwisely. But David, as a teenager, is acting wisely. Here's another one, 1 Samuel 24, verses 4 and 5. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. This is when David had cut off the corner of Saul's robe, and the Bible said his heart smote him. Who smote him? 
God did. The Holy Spirit did. Keep a sensitive conscience. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. If you do and he departs from you, you end up yesterday's man just like Saul. Here's a third one. The third one is, and I take this from 1 Samuel 26 and 9, also Romans 12 and 19. Do not avenge yourself. Vengeance belongs to God. And the moment we try to avenge ourselves, we are playing God. David didn't do that. As I mentioned, in David's development, there's approximately 20 years that go by. From a, we believe he's about 17 years of age when he killed, Saul, uh, killed uh, Goliath the giant. And uh, he was 37 years of age when he became king over all of Israel. It takes about 20 years to make a man of God. But something I note that happens to David, when David becomes first king of Judah, he's 30 years of age, then at 37, the king of Israel. And you'll find references to that in 2 Samuel, the second chapter in verse 4, also 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 3. That's when he receives additional anointings upon his life. Now, if, if every level that we go through in our lives, no matter where we are, the next step we need increased anointing for that. And so David, as the captain of Saul's army, David had an anointing upon his life, but when he becomes king of the tribe of Judah, he needs a fresh anointing. And we're going to talk more about fresh oil in particular in the next lesson. And then when he becomes the king over all of Israel, he received a third anointing. What it tells us is with every level of promotion, every level of increase, every increased position, we need additional anointing in our life, a new spiritual awakening within us. Now, if David had not been willing to wait, then what would have happened? What would have happened if David had attacked Saul and there were times when he could have easily killed him? Saul was asleep at his feet. And David is a man of war. It would have only taken one blow and Saul would have been dead. But what would have happened if he had done that? If he had done that, he would have divided Israel and never have become king over all of Israel, only a divided kingdom. Well, I've seen that happen so many times in church, so many times in ministry when a young minister is anointed by God, but he's not willing to wait. He's not willing to allow God to develop him. He takes matters into his own hands. And what does he end up doing? He ends up dividing a church, splitting a ministry. And of course, they always say, this is what God gave me. No, this is what you took. But the truth is, they will never reach their potential doing that. You cannot because you do not have unity. Unity is of the Holy Spirit. Unity is a thing from God. But if we're going to have unity, we have to learn to wait. We have to learn patience. Patience. Waiting on God. And that, that, the word waiting there doesn't mean sitting down and doing nothing. It doesn't mean, you know, just looking around, see well, what's God. No, no, no. That's not what that's talking about. It's not a passive word. It means seeking after God, or, or as God said, I've looked for a man, a man after my own heart, a man that was seeking after me. And that's one of the outstanding characteristics in the life of David. David was not perfect by any means, and David committed some terrible sins, but David knew how to repent and return to God. He was a man that continually was seeking after God. And that's how he was able to accomplish the things that he did and becomes actually the benchmark for Israel. After David's life, every king was judged by David. He was not like our father David or he was like our father David. David become the standard because 
He was a man after God's heart. I challenge you to do the same thing. Look at what God does in David's life, starting out when he's very young, and yet for the rest of his life, he's going to be in a spiritual pursuit after God. I want to do that. I want to do that. And of course, that's what Samuel did. Samuel never lost the anointing upon his life. You don't have to lose it. You don't have to be like a King Saul. If you will continue to follow after God, to seek after God all the days of your life, then the Bible said the fruit of the righteous is like the palm tree. One of the characteristics of the palm tree is the older it gets, the sweeter its fruit becomes. I want to be like the righteous. I want to be like the palm tree. And so God help us to seek after him and be tomorrow's man or today's man, never to lose God's anointing upon our lives. May God bless you.